All right, this is Danny, and uh, I've, I've got a couple of videos I wanted to share with everybody about the dangers in Mexico. Right now, I'm in Las Vegas, and we're fixing to head our way back down to Mexico and spend God knows how long, at least six months, uh, maybe more. But I had a couple of interviews that I picked up a few months back uh, with a couple of friends of mine, and they were shot. <laughs> uh, well... One was shot three times, and uh, the girl, she escaped the bullets, but her boyfriend wound up dead. So we're going to do a chat with them about safety in Mexico, and why haven't they left. The first guy is Jason. Uh, he, co he comes back and forth across the border quite often, but Lily is staying in Mexico, and not coming back across. So what would drive somebody to be shot in a literal shootout and not go back to the U.S. to what is perceived as safety? So let's hear about safety in Mexico. Should I travel through Mexico? Is it safe? Um, you, you see a lot of these articles of, oh my God, they will kill you there. They'll murder you to death. They'll murder you all the way to death. Anyway, so I'm sitting here with this guy. And he actually got shot here. Look, there's the bullet wound right there. Bullet wound right through my knee, one off the wrist, one in the chest. So he got shot three times. I mean, three times is a charm, but I still couldn't get rid of this guy. <laughs> if you're wondering about the safety, should you travel to Mexico? I want to hear it from this guy. I mean, he's the guy who lived through yeah, you saw the, an assassination attempt, should we call it? I don't know. So the first thing you don't want to do in Mexico is wear threatening t-shirts. Because wear threatening t-shirts, well, people do want to shoot you for that. that, that that's the first thing you got to avoid, is wear threatening t-shirts. Uh, another thing you got to do is... Um, just act like a normal human being, a decent person, you know, don't be a jerk. Don't punch your neighbor in the face. So, after being shot, uh, it's been three years now? Yeah, yeah it's going on three years. So three years ago, he was shot um, at, he was just at someone's house and uh, something kicked off. The other guy actually died and his... His uh, wife or girlfriend at the time did not. She didn't get shot, and she escaped unscathed. You would think that you would never come back to Mexico. Why are you still in Mexico, and what what keeps you from running like a little sissy back back for uh, the safety of America? The safety of America. Um, Mexico is beautiful. It has tons of things to offer. It's there is so much culture here, it's hard to absorb it all, um, there's so much to do, um, and the people are just so inviting. After I was shot, they all took me in and told me stories of their loved ones passed on, and I really related with the locals through that, and it was pretty inspiring to me, to see people, um, you know, that, that live down here day to day, in this environment, and the hustle and bustle of everything, and they still carry on, and everything is okay. So, I've been I've been traveling through Mexico for the last six years. I, I always drive, because why fly? I mean, I, I would miss all of the beauty along the way. And back in the 90s, you know, I'm going to date myself here, because, you know, the hair is already giving it away that I'm probably over 22. We're the same age. Yeah, we're the same age. And anyway... The most dangerous thing that ever happened to me was driving through Chicago. I was on my way to Detroit, and I missed a turn, got off the highway, and didn't catch 94, ended up in South Detroit, and because I sat at a green light too long reading my map, I was told that I had to get my white ass out of that neighborhood at gunpoint. And in my six years of traveling through Mexico, that's never happened to me, ever. So when, when you think about... Uh, is it dangerous to drive through Mexico? No. Use common sense. Don't go into a place that looks dangerous. No more than you would in, in Chicago or Dallas or 
or anywhere where there might be a crappy neighborhood, don't make the mistake of going somewhere that's sketchy. Uh, what, I mean, tell me, like, this is the guy. He's been shot. He's the guy they talk about on the internet about what you're supposed to be afraid of. And here he is, year after year, in Mexico. Why? I, love I mean, it. I mean, Mexico, it, it just has so much to offer. It's just too much not to come down here for. Like, I mean, if you just stay up in your safe little zone in the States, you never get to experience any other cultures, any other kind of life or anything like that. And the, the beauty's here. It's, it's not as dangerous as you think it is. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Crimes happen everywhere. It's going to happen in Chicago, where I'm from, or it could happen here. It could happen anywhere. And what would be your what would be your safety information? My safety you know, information definitely, I would say, um, don't don't project wealth. I, I, I never come down here and I project wealth and, and act wealthy because it kind of makes you a target. Let's be honest. Um, a lot of people where I was living only earned about a dollar a day where I was living, where I was shot. Uh, so they didn't have much money. They they didn't come from very much. So you know, I'm more of a target because um, I was white. I had money. You know, like this was actually uh, quite a big deal. It was in most of the major newspapers all over America. I you know like, yeah. name some of the art, name some of the publications well, that actually. Associated was. Press, ABC News, NBC News. You know, the, the world media took it. I, I had to hire a publicist to handle the media because they, they were constantly calling me at all hours of day and night to ask me questions. And honestly, I didn't want to feed into the fear because it wasn't about Mexico. Like. It, the crime in Mexico really had nothing to do with it. No, it's more about your uh, Oh, wait, see. Okay. Pina Galada. Wait, are these dangerous? Are they dangerous? Es peligroso? Okay. These are the most dangerous things in Mexico. Yeah. Stay away from the Pina Coladas. <laughs> Gracias. Si es bueno. So, in, um, the, the stories, if you want to look for it, you want to find out what it was actually about, or at least what the rhetoric was about this story, um, just look up John Galton, uh, which was a, uh, a pseudo, a pseudonym or pseudonym that he used, and, and that was the guy who was murdered and. There, there is some. Um, there's some different rhetoric on whether or not there were drugs or not. Um, do you want to dispel that, or do you? Want to yeah, yeah, I can dispel that real quickly. Um, basically, what corporate media does is they call the police and ask for the official story. Uh, the police official story was we found drugs at the house. Um, it was a drug lab. This and that and the other thing. And, um, John and Lily were not running the drug lab. They, they were not competing with the cartel. It was basically a local community member, uh, expat, who was angry at us and threatened us for five months and eventually paid the cartel to, not the cartel, but a cartel, to, to come and, um, you know, uh, eliminate us. When you say cartel, it was actually, it was actually a street gang of some thugs from El Salvador, or it was actually a different... Different gang. Yeah, it was just a young and up and coming street gang who was controlling a small territory and they got paid to knock off me and my car. So, I think if you're not dealing in drugs or, or if you're not putting your, yourself in a situation to deal with the cartel, I mean, hey, I, I don't make deals with the cartel, so I have no fear whatsoever. I've never had any negative issues, and I travel extensively. I travel at day, I travel at night. People say, don't travel at night. That's Maybe it is a good idea. Yeah, that's a good I, idea. Maybe don't I just... Uh, I don't have any problem with it, but other people. Yeah. Okay. Right, so you got for your own safety, potholes, don't travel at night. Road dangers all over the place. Traveling at night at high speeds not a good idea. Lower speeds, if you want to slow it down below the kilometer per hour speed limit, it's relatively reasonable, and you'll see people speeding by you all night long. Most people are not aware of their surroundings and how fast they're going, and how much cattle is out there that can just wander away from the farm. Yeah, that's true. That happened to me in Texas in my motorhome. Yep. Now he was driving in heavy rain and a, about three cows walked out in front of me and I hit I hit the tail end of a cow and it did not damage my RV. Thank God. 
Lucky yeah, me. I really but, like this. Um, if you do choose to park on the side of the road uh, in your RV or vehicle and sleep, make sure that you do it in a populated area where there are people. Don't isolate yourself. Um, that can leave you open to being targeted by a local who's a little desperate and could use a, a few dollars. Uh, always have someone around so you can make a lot of noise. Um, also, I, I, I travel with groups, so, so I do actually travel a lot at night, and the truckers do as well. And I usually fall in with a group of truckers, and if I do get tired, I, I will pull over at some of the OXOs and stuff that have uh, large groups of trucks, and I'll just kind of blend in with the truck drivers. Yeah, absolutely. If you do happen to get robbed, just keep your money separate. You know, have a little bit of money with a money clip, and if you do, for some reason, get harassed and you don't want to deal with it, take the money clip out of your pocket with a little bit of money on it and throw it away from you and then start making a bunch of noise. They will go for the money every time and leave you alone. I've never even had that. I've never, never had that approach by that, but I'm ready for it if it does happen. So, there you have it. That's uh, as close as you can get to the truth from somebody who's actually experienced it. And we wanted to talk about safety in Mexico. And you know, you go on, you hear all these bad stories about how horrible it is in Mexico. Well, maybe they're true, maybe they're not. <laughs> so, Lily. If you don't know, she was on uh, several news articles that had her ex, uh, well, their ex now, but maybe by different means, <laughs> he was shot to death. They murdered, he got murdered to death. Yeah. And it was a very tragic thing. A lot of people thought it would kill the conference, like. Yeah. So this is actually for the RV channel and not for Anarchy So people who are traveling in RVs and or just coming to Mexico, whether they fly or drive or whatever, may want to wonder, is it safe in Mexico? Is it safe to travel in Mexico? Well, why not ask somebody who's went through probably the most tragic thing you could possibly imagine? You know, her boyfriend at the time got murdered and her friend who I also interviewed the other day and he's here as well with us at somewhere around this conference he was shot three times and uh, he gave you his his take on the safety in Mexico um, Lily what would what would you tell someone who wanted to travel to Mexico should they fear should they not fear well, well, the first thing that I always say and I say this often um, but I know three people in my life who have been murdered Two of them were in Ohio. Only one of them was in Mexico. Um, and those were people close to me. They were, one of them was kind of involved with, you know, um, he was smuggling drugs from, from uh, I think, Canada or something like that. And he got pinched and somebody killed him because they thought he was going to talk. That shit happens in Ohio all the time. The other one was my cousin was just walking down the street and randomly got killed on his, on his 16th birthday on Valentine's Day. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, there's not really a safe place in the world. I think safety is an illusion. I think what we should search for is freedom and happiness and the ability to live on our own terms. And that's, that's why I'm in Mexico. Do you fear when you travel in Mexico? I mean, aside from your legal issues. Yeah, I have I have a unique legal situation, so I have fears from the government. But as far as the Mexican people are considered, no. When I first drove through Mexico, we slept on the side of the free road so that everybody told us to not drive, let alone sleep on. Um, there were points where, like, in the middle of the night, we needed help from random Mexicans and they saved our asses. Like... The, the general consensus, as far as I'm concerned, is it's like, it's safe as long as you're intelligent, you know, keep your wits about you, look, you know, pay attention for people that might be trying to take advantage because they exist everywhere, but... Yeah, in the, in the 90s, I had a, a situation where I was driving to Detroit and I just was, missed, took a wrong turn in Chicago and I ended up two blocks off of the highway. I was trying to get on 94 to head to Detroit out of Chicago. And as, as I was coming north through Illinois and missed the turn, I ended up in the neighborhood and I'm at a stoplight with a map open because this is pre-cell phone day and I'm like looking at the map, how do I get out of here? The light turns green, these guys pull up next to me and point a gun at me and tell me to get my white ass out of the neighborhood. So 
that's the only time I've really had someone stick a gun in my face. And yeah, and my that's own never stories, happened here. My know? own stories. I lived in Detroit before I moved to Mexico, and I lived in the hood of Detroit. And at one, like, I, I remember being solicited for prostitution just because there was a common thing on the street next door. There was one time we were just walking down the road, and bullets started whizzing past from a firefight on the other street right. that we weren't even involved in. Like, yeah. I've not had, despite being involved in, like, a murder and having had my house shot up, they had direct line of sight to shoot me that day. I was, I made eye contact with them. Not a single one of them tried. They didn't come after me. You know, I ran in the house that I was going to be raped and killed, and neither happened. I lost all of my shit to the police. Like, just know that you're, the police will steal your shit if they get the chance, but... So, uh, Lily had a, a marijuana charge in, uh, in Ohio, or is it, was it in Detroit? Or it's, was it's, it in it's in Ohio, yeah. And so she decided uh, that it was too oppressive. I mean, they really wanted more out of her than, than uh, the weight of the law should have, uh, should have been offering as far as a punishment. So she fled to Mexico, and she's been here ever since. So that's, that's what keeps her here, and part of, I, I guess you were making dabs or whatever so that was kind of yeah i mean from what i can tell with what happened with the murder is there was a misunderstanding as far as the community was concerned everybody told us you could you know you could sell cannabis products and not have issues i was told that by everybody we were making cannabis candies that we were famous for down here and cannabis oil and i think that combined with the fact that my ex was a little bit of a confrontational human being yes, I've met is him. what led to that. He was, he was extremely confrontational. I would agree. He, he pissed a lot of people off yeah. just by his very existence. And I think yeah. that's what happened there. You know, like, and I lived, to be clear, I lived in Acapulco for two months after the murder. And what got me to leave the city was not because I felt unsafe here. It was because I got tired of going out on the streets and having a local bring it up and then standing there crying with somebody random in the streets. I wanted to move on. So I left for that reason. That and that was that was three. The murder was three years ago. The, the murder was two years ago two on years. February first, and then I left about yeah. the beginning of May. And it was the day I I actually interviewed you guys the day before. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and so I had the the very last recording. <laughs> uh, ever basically. Which is crazy to consider. Yeah. And so my point here is to people traveling throughout Mexico it's not it's not as dangerous as you might think or as, as you hear here's somebody who actually went through the most dangerous possible thing but it was it had more to do with the environment in the situation that she put herself in or well the situation she ended up in yeah and not so much uh, like traveling if you're driving through Mexico they suggest stay on the toll roads if that makes you feel safer, fine. I drive Libras, I don't really care. Yeah, the, t the thing about the toll roads, like, <clears throat> there's less people willing to help you on the toll roads than the free roads, and yeah. people don't realize that. Like, yeah, if you get into a bind on the free roads, it's going to be a little frustrating, but there's going to be people that are trying to help you. Because, yeah. like, it happens so many times. Yeah, I, I recently drove uh, back to Texas to pick up some money that was owed to me, and uh, I broke down, like, in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't a city for, you know, uh, several miles. I thought it was actually further. There was one a few miles away, mm -hmm. but I had traveled across the desert for quite a way, so I, I was an hour away from the last city, and I thought I was in the middle of nowhere. And I was in this just a little tiny town up ahead that had like no services other than some gas and a, a tow truck. Somebody, as soon as I broke down, I pulled over and someone stopped and asked if I needed help. And then they sent a tow truck out and, and I got towed to this mechanic. And it was a Sunday. And they somehow went and found a fuel pump for me. I don't know where they got it from. And they had me back on the road within three hours, and I, I you know, my my Spanish is limited. It. My Spanish is limited, so I really, you know, I really couldn't ask for much. But I was able to to get this done only because the people were kind I have, enough. I, I have two stories actually. I just thought of in regards to safety. I want to share. The first one is when we first came here, we almost lost everything to railroad tracks. We got our trucks stuck on railroad tracks and tires, and it was just me and my ex at the time and our dog. And he had me run to the street in Sonora Desert and flag somebody down. And I got into an ambulance 
with some people I didn't know, and they drove us down to where the truck was, saved our asses, and moved on. Yeah. The other one that I have is like about a year and a half ago, I moved out to the country, and I was going off to the market by myself, and on the way back from the market, I got in the wrong wrong vehicle and anyone that traveled to Mexico cheaply knows you can get in these vehicles and just pay like a dollar and go for a long time you know or even a couple dollars and go for a long time the, what are they co collectivos collectivos and this one went off out into dirt road middle of nowhere like an hour and a half away at the time I didn't have any cell phone signal because I forgot to pay my bill like I almost paid my bill before getting in the taxi and was like ah fuck it I don't want to deal with it late right now I'm just going home and I did not go home. I was off in the middle of nowhere with this random guy by myself with a cell phone that didn't work and no way to protect myself. But it was just really, it just ended up being a three hour waste of time. Like he drove me out there, he turned it into a, into a tour. Like the, the one place he pointed out, he's like, this is this place. It has a school, that's it. <laughs> and then we moved on. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that mistake both ways cost me about 80 pesos, so about four bucks, and three hours of my time. But it taught me that even in, you know, the mountains where it's scary and you're fine. Like, yeah. The smaller, yeah, these little smaller towns that you'll you'll find people that are just so so willing to help, and you also find like uh, one of the traditions here in Mexico is uh, they say uh, good morning, you know, when is when is the is when is Saturday, when is in the smaller towns almost everybody says that, and uh, the bigger towns people are kind of less likely to say that they're less personable in the bigger towns. Yeah, bigger that's towns. definitely true. Yeah, so don't be afraid. The smaller towns are actually better, in my opinion. The problem, the, the thing that drove me out of the small town is the internet connections. Like, they do have internet, but I'm somebody that works a lot, and so 20 megabytes of internet that sometimes goes down for three to five days at a time is not cool for me. But for, I mean, everything else you need is out there, and the people will treat you right, and it's cheap as hell. So, decide for yourself. But rather than just making it fluffy and think, oh, yeah, come on down, I thought it would talk to some people that have actually been in those situations that everybody warns you about. So thanks. Thank you, Lily. <laughs>